I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about web performance, material UI, SQL charts, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a new website called Perf Rocks. This is a collection of web performance articles, books, talks, slides, people, and more. Wow, yeah, it's like a whole website with links to all those things. Now, if we take a look at articles, you may recognize some of them from The Treehouse Show, but this is a wonderful curated collection on web performance. So you can see Browser Diet, which we covered once on here. Uh, we have a beginner's guide to website speed optimization, which we also covered here on The Treehouse Show. Uh, actually, just a ton of resources if you think you need to catch up on web performance. Uh, there is a nice collection of tools. I believe we've gone over some of these, not all of them here on the show. These all do different things to enhance your website's performance. Here's one for grunt responsive images, which will produce images at different sizes for your responsive websites. Anyway, not too much to say, but definitely check it out. It's just a wonderful curated collection of modern performance enhancements for your site. You know, I clicked on the people section. It says inspiring individuals that care deeply about fast websites and teach others the best practices. A lot of great people there. Command to, F, are we on here? No, to, this is pointless. Forget this site. Well, I was going to say, I noticed we weren't on here, and then I realized that you actually have to contribute something meaningful to be listed there. Right in the fields, Nick. Next up is Material UI. This is a tiny CSS framework and also a set of components for React that are based on Google's all new material design. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to click on Demo here. And these are all of the components that can be used with React. React, of course, is a JavaScript library for creating user interfaces. So this is basically putting a coat of paint on top of that that makes it look like Google's new material design. So here you have some buttons. We can click on a dialog box here and see what that looks like. Pretty nice. There's drop down menus. So that looks lovely. Icon buttons, regular icons, and here's every possible icon you could ever want. There's an amazing amount of them. In there, there's also inputs. So really, really nice stuff. It's it's really nicely done. So let me go back here and see if I can get to the home page. There we go. If you scroll down here, there's a section for getting started. So if you just want to kind of get an overview and see what this is all about, that's a good place to start. There's the components section, which we already looked at. And there's also the CSS framework. Now, I think calling this a CSS framework is a little bit of a stretch because there's only colors and typography listed here, but it is a framework nonetheless. So you have all of the normal typography stuff that you might expect, and then the colors are really pretty comprehensive. They've used less variables to add every UI color in the Google Material Design color palette. So if you scroll down here, you can see all these different shades of blue and indigo and teal and green. It's pretty cool. You know, I'm a big fan of Google's material design and also React. I, I can't wait for it to be more widespread. Yeah. You know, for us to be living in a material world. I have no reaction to that. Next up, we have a project called Chroma.js. This is a small JavaScript library for doing color calculations and conversions. So if we look at some of the examples right here, you can call this chroma function, give it a hex value, and tell it to darken. Then you can give it uh, another command, say, hey, I want the hex value back from that. And this is a converted version of a darker version of what you sent in. Now, you can also scale that. There's actually a ton of different options here. Let's go ahead and look at the API docs. 
Now you can give this the colors to begin with in a few different ways. You can give it CSS, RGB, or hex, and it's very easy to use. Send in a string or the different RGB values, and then you're good to go. Now you can return a color from these things. You this is aliased as chroma.css. So if we send in hex, uh, we get a color back. Now we can interpolate between different colors, uh, and then you can even give that a mode as well. You can either do HSV, uh, LAB, or, or lab as some people call it. Uh, now you can also work with these. You can saturate, brighten, get an alpha channel, make it darker, make it lighter. And once again, you can chain these and do all sorts of conversions from RGB, CSS, darken, and back. A uh, ton of different options. This works with npm, so just npm install chroma js, and you are good to go. So go ahead and check that out if you are wanting to do any color conversions. They're not extremely difficult to do, but this library will save you just an extra little bit of time. Yeah, it's pretty handy to be able to do that in JavaScript, whereas normally you might do that in, a in CSS. Your head. <laughs> in your head or in a CSS preprocessor like SAS or less, but Sometimes you have to do stuff like that in JavaScript, so it's kind of convenient to have that available there as well. Next up is CSS Dig. This is a Chrome extension, so you can install this to the Google Chrome web browser, which I have already done. I'm just going to go up here and click on the CSS Dig plugin here, and I have an asset on this page called style.css. And I can click Start Digging. Whoa, what just happened? I don't well, know. What happened? It listed out all of the CSS properties that are being used in that style sheet. And then on the right-hand side here, it's listing the counts for all of those properties. So every time one of those properties is used, it's counted here. So this is a good way to kind of dig into your CSS and say, like, you know, how many backgrounds am I declaring here? Or maybe you have a rogue background color and the Chrome inspector isn't quite giving you all the information you need and you just want to maybe do a quick check and say, like, hey, did I set all of my backgrounds across my whole site to the color scheme that I'm using? Is this all correct? So you can dig in here. And if you see one that's maybe a problem, you can click on it. And very much like the Chrome Inspector, it will show you the CSS in that particular file where it's coming from. So you can say, ah, on this button here, it looks like I'm declaring that. And you can dig into that a little bit further. Anyway, thought this was pretty cool. It's a very nice complement to the Chrome Inspector. So if that's maybe not giving you everything that you need to dig into your CSS, this can be helpful as well. Yeah, I dig it. Dig it as well. Next up, we have a project called FNord Metric. This is really, really cool. It allows you to create charts straight from SQL. Wow. Yeah, really, really interesting. Let's go ahead and jump straight to the examples because examples are more interesting than words. Now, uh, let's take a look at this line chart right here. You can see that we have this chart. It's got x, y coordinate, and then as we go along, we can see the different labels. This is not that interesting on its own, but what is interesting is how this was generated. So we have this SQL-like query where we're importing a table from a CSV and then saying, draw this line chart and then giving it this specific data. And you'll notice that we're also doing a calculation on the data straight into the chart. So then this is run using a command line interface, uh, outputting a format and passed in the SQL. And this is what you get back. Whoa, that's all it takes to create this chart. You don't even have to do any manipulation or programming on it. Now, there are a ton of different charts that you can create here. And the examples on this are really great because it teaches you how to use it as you are going along looking at the different examples. So here again, we see the source code for this example, a little bit more complicated than the last time. And that creates this chart with multiple y-axes. 
there are combined charts, area charts, and this also comes with a server. So instead of exporting the data every time, you can create a server, uh, serve it up on a port. You can even give it different storage backends and it can work with StatsD if you are already using that. Anyway, there are a ton of different options here. This is an absolutely amazing project and I recommend checking it out. We'll have a link to it in the show notes. Very nice stuff. Well, that's all we have time for this week. I'm at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. For more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes, which you can find right below this video. Thanks so much for listening, and we will talk to you next week.